Uh, good morning, I'm Christian Joaquin. Uh, I'm a medical student who has the pleasure of working with Dr. Kevin Yu uh, to present this complication of spine surgery from osteoporosis. I'll try to make this as painless as possible, being your last day. Um, I'm sure you're all aware of what it is, um, not because you're so old and have it, but because you're all doctors. Um, so what, what, can, what can surgeons do about the osteoporosis? Um, like in construction, um, a strong foundation is key, and so if you can prehabilitate a patient and maximize their state of health uh, prior to surgery, um, hopefully the <coughs> outcomes can be a lot better. Um, you can use your vitamin D, calcium, and intermittent PTH. Uh, intraoperatively, you have your hardware and your composites. Um, you know, just pick your favorite booth out here. Uh, and with that, I give you a case study of a 56-year-old female with osteoporosis. Uh, her T-score uh, was negative 2.5 at the femur, negative 2.4 at the lumbar spine. Uh, she has chronic low back pain and leg pain. Um, and with her images, um, it was decided that she would be benefit from a, a 3, 4, 4, 5 uh, ALIF with posterior fusion. Um, and it's also interesting to know that she's had prior surgeries of laminectomies and facetectomies uh, about three years ago. And so this is her post-op day one um, images. Um, you can see placement of hardware and screws. Passable, I guess, Dr. Yu? Oh, she didn't? Okay. Um, oh, no, you're right, okay. So uh, everything looks okay. Um, there was no fractures noted. Uh, the patient had improvement of her symptoms. Uh, so you would think that she goes home probably day three. Um, but wait, there's more. This wouldn't be a complication without it. So how did she do? Um, two weeks after her surgery, she had some post-operative pain, and as I said, improved lower extremity symptoms. Um, four weeks later, she had increasing pain, but it was still controlled with her uh, medications. And she had an episode of severe back and shin pain and went to the ED, had an MRI, and was found to have a seroma. Three months later, though, she, back, she began to have persistent and chronic leg pain. Uh, so she was then um, sent for a CT scan. And <clears throat> as you can see here, a lot of uh, multiple lucent foci um, and, uh, and some uh, vertebral compression fractures. I want to direct your attention here to the L4-5 interbody cage, which now sits at her L5 vertebral body level. Uh, seems to have eroded or made its way through. Uh, some more images. <clears throat> and here's the cage. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> so what happened? Um, on your left, you have your pre-op. Middle, you have your post-op day one. And on the right, you have about two to three months post-op. Looks nasty, right? And with that, I would like to ask the audience, if you could show your hands, please, how many of you would reapproach anteriorly and remove the cage and do a corpectomy? Anybody? No? Maybe? Would you go just posteriorly and use uh, cement, extend the fusion, use sacral ALR, iliac screws, hooks and wires? This is a safe space, so if you want to use belt and suspenders, it's okay. We won't make fun of you. And what was actually done? There was an attempt at an anterior approach. Um, the vascular surgeon, however, upon uh, reaching the L5 body, found that there was so much scarring that it was not safe to um, completely expose it. And so the decision was made to um, abort the anterior approach and just go posteriorly uh, and decompress by removing the L5 screws um, because the screws actually were, the, were now the main compression of those roots. Um, they also extended the fusion up to L2 and added uh, SAI screws with cement. Um, infused through the uh, fenestrated and cannulated screws. And this is a uh, post-op revision. Uh, I believe this is day one. And you can see here, no, no point in the L5 screws, but the uh, L5, uh, 4 or 5 interbody cage was left in. And this is her one month post-op. Still looks pretty nasty. Um, uh, you can see here some Fractures, uh, again, not looking good. But uh, patient, and the patient at this point still had um, chronic low, uh, low back pain and leg pain. Um, more images, more views. You can see the cage sitting nice and comfortably here. And this is five months later. Um, 
mostly unchanged. Uh, it actually looks like she has a little bit more um, densities in all the right places. And here it is again. So in conclusion, how did this patient do? Well, surprisingly, her most recent visit, she states that her uh, low back pain and leg pain are managed with her uh, pain medications. Um, and she's actually ready to start physical activity. Uh, she was not uh, put on Forteo or stop, she wasn't on any bisphosphonates and she is a smoker. Um, so that may have had an effect um, prior to her surgery. Um, again, the prehabilitation. Uh, literature currently states that there's not a set amount of time prior to surgery as to when it would be best. Um, you can choose your hardware and the bone cement through the pedicle screws and through and through, maybe not for a revision because of those, uh, the anterior scarring. Um, and the CT criteria for a DEX I thought was interesting because um, this patient was 56 years old and there, she didn't really have an indication to get a DEXA, but she, for whatever reason, had it. And um, there are some studies that state that certain, if you have certain findings on a CT scan, that could be used as a um, screening criteria to go get a DEXA. And while it's not the most reliable test, at least it's something. And thank you very much for your time.